I'm here to talk to you today about the story of me. And while, <laughs> exactly, while that could be very enthralling to talk to you about what I am, I'm really talking to you about the collective stories of me that we all have, so that we all have these in our mind. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is that at the essence of that, um, we crave social bonds as human beings. Behind that craving is the de desire to be seen, heard, and validated. Let me say that again, seen, heard, and validated. And so sometimes our stories can get so loud that we can get in our own way. Okay? And we want to share that unique story, but we need to think about, are our stories so loud that they're inhibiting real deep, meaningful conversation from taking place? So, um, if we, if we take that a little bit further and we think about, you know, sort of the essence of, of why that's happening or, you know, what's the problem, um, you know, behind the story of me is that desire that we want to feel as though we belong to a group. We want to feel connected. And yet, as human beings, we're also having to grapple with the fact that we are very much alone. And so it is very much about understanding that paradox of how do we handle the fact that we want connection, and yet we also want to feel as though we're um, understanding that we're in the world that we come in and we leave alone, and how do we live with that? So we can get in our own way, and when our stories get so loud, nobody in the end can get heard, heard seen, or validated. Even worse, sometimes we can have the illusion of connection. And so we can all have 5,000 Facebook friends in today's world, right? Um, but do we have deep and meaningful conversations is really an important thing to ask ourselves. And so that illusion can sometimes mean that deep conversations are more rare than they need to be. So the story that you feel you need to tell the world in order to be validated is the story of me. Do you see who I am is at the root of that? And at the root is the desire for validation, to be seen and heard. So think about it as the tape recorder that's playing in the back of your mind, or for this crowd, the digital file, perhaps, um, that's playing. And what is that saying? What's the story saying? We all have those stories, so it's very much about accepting that we're human, and that we all have those stories, so we can actually feel more connected through sharing those vulnerabilities and those stories but it is about vulnerability as well. So how we want to be seen, where I work, where I live, what I've accomplished, how often do we hear these things? When we meet people, when we talk, how really core are they? And yet they're the first thing that we said. And I understand that when you first meet somebody, of course you're not gonna get into deep, this is who I am at my core, right? <laughs> we understand that, but it's amazing our society goes to that length to say, do you see me? Do you see where I live? Do you see what I'm driving? And so I'd ask you to think about how many times have you heard stories from people? You know, I heard one recently of somebody who came back from a vacation. Their life was changed profoundly, and they wanted to talk about how profoundly it was changed. And yet, the person that they were talking to about that wanted to interject their own story so badly that they wanted to say, I've been there too. I was there. And what's behind that desire to interject that story? So in the end, the person who really wanted to say about how their life had been changed never got heard, never got validated, never got seen. So why do we need to interject? Um, we want to be able to uh, be present in our lives. So to be in this moment as we are now. I'm a big believer that all we ever have is the moment. So let's think about that for a second. We're in the moment. So be alive in the moment. Be fully present in the moment. It's too easy to be glancing down at our iPhones. I'm not saying that I'm not guilty, too, of doing it, but I think the lesson is look up, right? What are we missing? Look up. And to own your space. And what I mean by owning your space is understanding that you have a God-given right to be on this planet, right? And to step confidently in that right. To own your space to be able to say, I want to move forward with my story being not quite so loud or in a way that's a little bit more controlled. To listen 
And I think that listening is one of the human skills that we need to develop constantly. I'll be talking about it a little bit more, but I think it's the single greatest human ability to find the real human. So we're cloaked and masked in our own stories, that's true. But the human is there for you to find and to move toward that meaningful dialogue. And I think that the topic is so important to me, and I'm so passionate about it, because I believe that we can only really talk about changing the world when we start talking about changing ourselves. Because if you think about the big issues that the world is grappling with, whether it's climate change or global peace or issues in the Mideast or the plethora of issues that your generation and mine have to grapple with, they're being done by human beings, right? With stories. And how loud are those stories? So why aren't we talking more about the story of me? Well, we can avoid vulnerability at all cost. We may not like who we are when we're alone. That's a reality. So all of us have pieces that we may not like. And that bonds us rather than divides us. So to be somehow human in our society diminishes our individuality in this individualistic culture. So think about that. Being human takes away from our individuality. So as individuals, we strive to have, to, to break out from the pack. Look at me, look at my title, look at what I've done. Right? But what's human, that I cry, that I mourn, that I feel passion, right? These are things we share that actually make us stronger as individuals. So my thesis is the reverse, that being human actually enhances our individuality. The reality is it's sometimes easier to simply talk past people. So I'm not suggesting that in all of our conversations we're going for deep dialogue, but I am suggesting that we're on a dangerous sort of precipice of having artificial conversations or shallow conversations become the norm. And let's be open about that and our own vulnerabilities in terms of changing it. So how do we change? First of all, we have to want to change. And it would be disingenuous of me to suggest that the reasons for our stories of me are not deeply rooted. Of course, from social psychology background, most of those stories stem from childhood, right? Um, the reality is that we have to work on those. But at some point, as adults, we have to make a conscious choice. It really does come to that, as to how long our stories are going to continue to define us. How long will our stories continue to define us? And I think we have to embrace that paradox that I talked about of intimacy versus being solitary. And can you sit with that as a human being? Because that's the essence of the human condition, the notion of paradox between intimacy and being solitary. Accept the reality of finite time, so how do we want to spend it? If we're only on the Earth for a certain amount of time, let's not waste it. I don't know about you, but I don't know what my destiny is, so I don't know if I'm going to be here for five years, 10 years, 50 years. But I know that my time is finite, and I know I don't want to waste it. So for those who want and are capable, I think that listening is the single biggest thing you can do to enhance your story of me being more centered. And active listening is what I mean. And by active listening, I mean being present and in the moment so that there is nothing when you're listening that's more important than being locked on to the person that is speaking to you. I often use the metaphor of listening like a cow, which is not my own. It's Mary Rose O'Reilly who wrote a book called Radical Presence. It's a teaching book where she says that, she talks about listening like a cow, which I've done many times myself. If you've had that great opportunity of listening to a cow, you realize that cows do three things typically when you talk to them. Firstly, they think, where's that noise coming from? And they walk over to see what the heck is going on. The second is, once they get closer to you, they almost always do the tilt in the head. If you keep talking, yes, I'm crazy, if you keep talking, <laughs> you'll find out that they stare into your soul, <laughs> right? And I guess the point of that is, how much are we staring into the soul of someone when they're talking to us? What lessons can we learn from that cow's eyes, right? So, also, I would suggest that you have to become mindful and present about the moment to really embrace what the moment means and to take chances. You'll see that in taking chances, people respond to you. 
Find the humanity because it's there. It's there in every crowd, it's there in this room, it's omnipresent. But you have to sometimes get past the stories of me to find that humanity. And I believe, as I hope you can see, that you change the world from the inside out. So I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak today, and I really hope that you take away from this conference the thought of how are you sitting with your own story of me. Thank you very much.